Hey folks, I've had questions from a number of you about how to make uh, soil cost adjustments to shift the spreadsheet from uh, yards of soil to bales of soil. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. It's a multi-step process, but hopefully walking through it will make complete sense. So as it is, it's sort of filled out here for multiple um, uh, yards of soil. So we're going to change this as we go. So we're just going to look at <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to look at <clears throat> one bale of soil at about $35 and without any delivery fee. We're going to pick this up somewhere. So this is our basic cost here. Now the main thing we need to change here is the volume of that soil. So this here is the figure for a cubic yard of um, soil. And a bale of soil isn't nearly that big. A bale of soil is about this big, which is 3.8 cubic feet. So what we need to do, because we need this um, um, uh, figure here to be in cubic centimeters, is we need to do a conversion. So I added in one of the last versions a conversion sheet here for just this sort of thing. And so what you can do is if you change the green cell, it changes and gives you the measurements for all the different uh, volumes here. So I've already done this for cubic feet here. I entered in 3.8 cubic feet here. And we can see it gives us 107,605 in terms of cubic centimeters. So this is the number we are going to put in to get our volume conversion uh, proper. And by proper, I mean from imperial to metric. And we can talk about that another time. So 107,605. So that's what goes here. So this is basically our new, um, our new figure here. So this is all basically done. So uh, we now have our price per centimeters cubed. So this only helps us now once we know two things. Is one, what size tray we're using. So how much of the soil do I need for each tray? And then the second thing is, how many trays can I fill with a bale of soil? Now theoretically, because we have the volume of the soil and the volume of the tray, we can calculate that. But as you know, we're not packing a tray nearly as dense as we're packing a, a bale is packed. And so we need to do some adjustments there. Now, if this was water and we had 10 liters of water and each tray carried one liter, we would have 10 trays worth because water doesn't compress or it doesn't change significantly anyways. So with soil, it's quite a bit different. And in the beginning years of the food peddlers, we had about a 40% difference in terms of that. So when we did the calculation, we actually had to add 40% of soil to the cost because that's how it worked out. We got the soil quite loose and then we made it more compact is how we did it. Um, but what we're going to do in this case is we're going to make it actually um, less compact. So we're going to go now to, I'm just going to uh, I'll close this actually to get rid of this. Now we're going to go to the second part here. And that's looking at our tray dimensions. And these are all pre-filled in here. And some of these are our standard trays, our 10 by 20, uh, which is 1.25 inches high. This 10 by 20 by 1 inch high is the bootstrap tray. The 10 by 20 by 2 inches tall is, the, um, is uh, just a sort of a more standard tray. So <clears throat> this information is in here, and we have the dimensions for these trays in here. But then we have these multipliers here. And what we're trying to do is use these multipliers to get an accurate trays per delivery of soil number here. So as it is, this bale of hay that we've put in, which we are filling, so we're filling the tray 100%. You can see we're doing these all at 100%. And that's what you're going to do with a tray that's one and a quarter or one inch as tall. Whereas a two inch tray, you might only fill at 75%. So that's what the tray fill means. Now the multiplier is something different. This is accounting for compression or decompression of the soil here. And so that's why there's some calculations to be done. So right now we have a 20% multiplier in there. And it's saying that a bale of uh, soil gives us 18 trays of um, worth of soil. Now for those of you who have used a, a bale, you're like, well, that's not accurate. I get more than that. And so you can see what we're going to do first of all, we're going to take this multiplier out of here. And as soon as I take the multiplier out of there, because that means we're compressing the soil, you can see now a bale of soil is worth 22 trays. And now you're thinking, eh, that's actually still not enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this at minus 20. And then we're at about 27 and a half trays. 
Now for what I'm doing right now, we're getting about 27 trays, I think, of um, uh, per bale of, of soil. So this is the adjustment I'm making here. We're filling the tray 100%. We're doing a multiplier of negative 20 because we're decompressing the soil. We're demultiplying it in that sense. Um, and then you can see our tray cost here is $1.27. Whereas before, if I sort of control Z here, that, that, that before we made those adjustments, it was uh, worth $1.90. But because, oops, I went to the other way. Because we're actually decompacting the soil, we're making our soil go further. By making these adjustments, we're bringing our cost down to $1.27. So that's the, that's the gist of it there. Um, we've just done it for one tray. Let's take a look at it in another situation. Let's say you're using two inch trays, but you're not filling them up 100%, you're filling them up uh, 75%, basically. Um, you're gonna use the same multiplier. So the multiplier is, is, is a sort of a function of compression or decompression. And because we determined that minus 20% works for this tray, it's actually gonna work for all of them. So what I'm gonna do is just do everything at minus 20. If I know I'm always gonna have bales of hay, of, of, uh, of soil, and you can see I've already done that for this cat grass cell because I was playing around with that before. So this is my standard now. Now I've basically calibrated my spreadsheet for bales of soil. So my multiplier is minus 20% because I'm making my soil expand and go bigger. And then we're going to have a tray fill option here, which is going to have to do with how much we're filling up the tray. So when we look at this, uh, Two inch tray at 75%, we can see um, uh, it's about $1.52. So let's, let's play with this a little bit here in another way to, to show you the um, how things correlate. We've got our one inch tray here, minus 20% at 100% fill, which should be the same as a two inch tray at a 50% fill. So if I adjust that, and there we go. So what we're just seeing is some consistency, which is my way of saying, hey, look, the spreadsheet works like it's supposed to. So um, yeah, it just gives you a sense of that. So it, playing with these numbers and seeing how it adjusts things really does help you understand your operation a lot better. And so like one way I might use this is I would say to myself, okay, I know from experience and from this super awesome microgreens teacher that an, an inch and a quarter deep tray is sufficient. And I know the cost of that with this is $1.27. I happen to have two inch trays. I got a thousand of them, of them for free. So I'm not gonna buy inch and a quarter trays. I'm going, to, I'm going to use these ones, of course I am. And I'm only gonna fill them up an inch and a quarter because that's the amount of soil I need. Why would I fill it up anymore? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna adjust this basically to get to the, that number, right? That same number. So. It's going to be about 62%. We'll say 62.5% basically. So this tells me if, if I have a two inch tray and I know I only need an inch and a quarter of soil and an inch of quarter of soil is worth $1.27, in order to get this to $1.27, if I set it at 63.5%, I will be using the same amount of soil. So that's quite precise. But now I think to myself, well, 75% or three quarters, which is fairly easy to measure, is too much. 50% is too little, so I know I need to go somewhere in between to fill my trays. And if you're filling, you know, hundreds of trays a week or even dozens of trays a week, you're going to be able to hit around that mark um, quite easily. So just using this as an example to show you the different ways that the spreadsheet is flexible that can help you make other sort of calculations on things. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's just do a quick overview looking at that. We've put it in our units and our, our pricing here, and we've made the conversion using the conversion sheets. So we have the bale of uh, the volume of the bale in centimeters cube represented here. And just as a quick thing here, if I change this to 10, you can see this doesn't change because that's a number we've input. And this doesn't change either. We have 10 bales. These, these things are all the same. Um, the total amount of money we spend changes, right? But our, our price per unit doesn't. So once we have this in there and we know what our price per centimeters cubed is, we go down to determine how many centimeters cubed we're using per tray of soil. If we're filling the tray 100%, we leave it at 100%. If we're filling it less, we reduce that. 
If we have a compressed soil that is becoming less compressed as we fill a tray, we use a negative multiplier. And if we have a loose soil that becomes more compressed as we fill a tray, we use a positive multiplier. In our case, we're using a very compressed bale. It's loosening about 20%, and so we're putting a minus 20% value in there to get um, this number here. Now this is trays per delivery of soil, which I changed up here to have for 10 bales. So this kind of helps you if you're looking at your orders and, and how much sowing you have to do, you can look at things and go, okay, well, if I want to have enough soil for one month or two months or three months, you can, you can kind of do that here to determine what that's going to look like and what you're going to need to pay for that. So hopefully that's helpful. I will post this right away. And if you have questions, you can ask me on the uh, Facebook Crop Planner page or right in the comment section on YouTube.